All right, so section 3.2, Foundations of Math 30. Uh, we are going to continue looking at sets. Uh, we've talked about set notation. We've talked about some definitions in our last lesson. And today we're going to talk a little bit more about Venn diagrams, what each of the regions in the Venn diagram means. We won't get into too much uh, uh, new notation today. That'll be for next section. But we're just going to talk a little bit about uh, Venn diagrams and it, you know, filling in some... Uh, some sections of the Venn diagram. So if you take a look at Explore the Math, page 159, you all should be on that page right now. And it says this, in an Alberta school, there are 65 grade 12 students. Okay, 65 is the number, the total number of grade 12 students. Of these students, 23 play volleyball, 26 play basketball, and 31 don't play either sport. All right. So we've got numbers here, and uh, you know it might seem like all we got to do is just put these numbers in the regions of the Venn diagram, and we'll be done. Uh, this is the Venn diagram for the situation, and the question is, how can we use the Venn diagram to determine the number of students who play volleyball only, basketball only, and both volleyball and basketball? So let's just stop and talk for a minute about the regions of the Venn diagram. Some of this will be a refresher. The universal set is this big rectangle here. And we know that there should be 65 students in all. Right? That's what we're given right here. Now, the subsets here of S are this blue circle is the volleyball circle. Okay? So if you are a volleyball player, you will be somewhere in this circle. If you play volleyball only and not the other sport that's involved here, basketball, then your name, or you would be right here in this region of the Venn diagram, right? That is the volleyball only region. That's what we're talking about right there. If you play basketball only, then you would be over here in this part of the Venn diagram. This is the basketball only section, okay? If you played both, you guessed it, you would be in this section right here. That's where you would be. Okay? Because you are in the volleyball circle and you're in the basketball circle at the same time. Alright? Now, if if we had the grade, all the grade 12 students in this school in a room and I asked them to put up their hands when I said, who plays volleyball? It looks like there's 23 that put up their hands. Okay? And so we've got 23 students that play volleyball. Once they put their hands down and I say, okay, who plays basketball? 26 people put up their hand, okay? So if I did this, 23 and 26, because those are the two questions I asked. And then I said, who doesn't play either of these sports? And I have 31 hands go up. And you might think, okay, well, that's easy. I'll just put 31 right there because that is that number and those people would not be in either one of those, those regions, right? And you would be absolutely correct. But we do have a bit of an issue, don't we? Anyone see what the problem is? Okay, when you add up all of these numbers inside the Venn diagram, that's gonna, that looks like it's going to be a little bit more than 65. So how many do we have here? 30 and 20 is 50 and 20 is 70. 79 we have, looks like what? 80. Okay, does that, does that ring a bell here? Does that look right? We have 80... Uh, counts in total here, 80 students. Now we only have 65 actual people, so that means that we've double counted some people, right? So when I asked the people who played volleyball, there was some, there were some people that put up their hand for volleyball and they put up their hand for basketball. So I can't count them as separate people. We've double counted them. So how many people have we double counted? Okay, so if we add that up again, 20 and 20 is 40. 49, okay, and 30 is 79, and 1 is 80, so we've got 80 students here. And how many have we double counted? So you go 80 minus 65 is 15. So we've counted 15 people twice. That means that 15 people put up their hand for both volleyball and basketball. Now, does that fix things? Does that make everything all better? Uh, no, it doesn't, because I've just added more people, <laughs> right? So what does that mean that I have to do? If I know that there's 15 people that do both, what do I have to do? Any ideas? Well, 
be brave and guess. What do I have to do with that? What else do I have to do with that 15 number? Because now I've got, you know, I've got, what have I got? 95 here now. No? Okay. Subtract 15 from each side. Okay, now we're getting somewhere. Each side meaning each of these numbers beside the 15? Okay. You're absolutely right. Now look at it. If we've got 23 in total that play volleyball, and I've got 15 over there in this section, that means I need to subtract 15 from this overall number, right? Because I can only have, what was it, 23? I can only have 23 that play volleyball. So how many more do I need? 15 plus what is 23? I need 8 right here. That's correct. So you see, that makes sense, doesn't it? We've got 8 plus 15. We've got 23 volleyball players. And I take 15 away from here, and what does that give me? 26 minus 15 is 11. So 11 plus 15. Now, now notice, okay, that the 15. Oh, I doesn't really you can't see that. The 15 and the 11 are still both in the basketball circle. So 15 plus 11 is 26 that play basketball. That makes sense. 15 plus 8 is 23 that play volleyball. That makes sense. <clears throat> so now let's add up, let's add up what we've got here. 31 and 8 is what? 39 and 11 is 50 and 15 is 65. Okay, so now we can, now that we've uh, labeled this diagram correctly and, and put the numbers in the right spots, now I can answer these questions. Who plays volleyball only? Well, remember that's this section right here and that is... That's eight. Eight people. Eight people play volleyball only. Eleven people play basketball only. And there are 15 that play both. Make sense? Okay. So if you can if you can do that, that's that's really important to be able to do, to be able to put the numbers properly in the Venn diagram. And of course, the, the big thing there, you just go ahead and put the numbers in the circles uh, right away at the beginning. But then you have to add them all up and see if there are any that you've double counted, okay? And that'll be a bit of an issue if you've double counted some. Put the, uh, the ones you've double counted, okay, in the middle section, and then subtract that number from each of the, uh, each of the sides there that was mentioned. Okay. Any other questions? All right, so in summary here, uh, this is the, uh, the, the diagram or the chart, I guess, on page 160 in your textbook. So if we just review this real quickly, let's, let's see. Sets that are not disjoint, okay, that means that they're not completely separate, they overlap a little bit, and they share common elements. So in this diagram, A and B are not disjoint. I know it's a double negative, it's a bit tricky, but they are not disjoint because it looks like there's a region where they overlap here. Okay? Each area in a Venn diagram represents something different, okay, so we know that, we talked a little bit about that already. When two non-disjoint sets are represented in a Venn diagram, you can count the elements in both sets by counting the elements in each region of the diagram just once. So that's what we did, right? Remember we had a number here, a number here, a number here, and a number here. And we counted those just once, and that had to add up to our total of 65, right? So that's, that's what that means. Now, if we look at this diagram here, the blue part here, okay, elements in set B, but not in set A. And that is this part right here. Right? Uh, elements here uh, in U, but not in set A or B. So that's all the outside part here. Right? That's the outside part. I'll try and get some rid of some of this stuff here. And on the other side here, elements that are in set A, but not B. So that's just this region here, not including the overlap. And then this uh, region in the middle would be everything that's in both sets. Okay? All right, so this is where the two circles intersect, where they overlap. All right, just to finish this off, each element in a universal set appears only once in a Venn diagram. If an element occurs in more than one set, it's placed in the area of the Venn diagram where the sets overlap. And I think you understand that. Okay, any of you have any questions?
All right, so here's question number one from your assignment. This is from 3.2, so I'll just kind of get you get you started by uh, by doing that with you. So number one says consider the following sets uh, u, okay, the universal sets, so all the numbers that we're considering: two, three, four, six, eight, nine, ten, twelve, fourteen, and fifty. Set A is three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, and set B is two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. A says illustrate these sets using a Venn diagram. Okay, so let's do this together. You can make a large circle if you want. It's generally you'll see in the textbook that the universal set uh, is a large square. So I've got the universal set, and I have to put all of these numbers somewhere in the universal set. Now I know that there are subsets. A is a subset of U because I see three in A and also in U and so on, right? These are subsets. So, let's do this. I would um, I would take a look at these sets A and B, first of all. You know that there's going to be two circles, but are they disjoint or are they? Uh, do they overlap, right? And so what you could do is take a peek here and see if there's any numbers that are the same in both. And it looks like 12 is in both uh, subsets. Are there any other ones? Oh, I see six. Any other ones? I think that's it. Okay, so guess what? A and B are going to overlap. So, your two circles. And we'll just name one A over here and one B over here. Okay, and I see that. I'm going to start in the middle here and the ones that overlap. And it looks like six and 12 are in both sets, so I put them there where they overlap. Okay, does everyone see that? Make sense? And that's probably the best, best, best place to start. I mean, you could start by putting all these numbers just in the big, you know, rectangle here, and then you have to erase them and put them in a, a circle. Then if you leave this, um, this part to the end, you're going to have to erase them again and put them in that section. So I just usually try and start with this one. Okay, so A. Which of the numbers that are in A but not B? Well, that is 3, 9, and 15. So, we're going to go 3, 9, and 15. They're going to go in this region. The numbers that are in B, okay, but not in A, so B but not A, are going to be 2, 4, 8, 10, 14. 2, 4, 8, and 14. <clears throat> Alright, so now what you want to do is you want to just, just quickly double check, right? Make sure you've got all of these numbers that are in the universal set. Make sure all of those are in there. And if there are any that are not in A or B, they have to go on the outside somewhere, right? So do we have a 2? Yes. Do we have a 3? Yes. 4? Yeah. 6? Yeah. 8? Yeah, I see it. 9? Yes. 10? 12, yeah, 14, and 15. Yeah, they're all they're all counted for. Okay? They all seem to be in the right spot. So does that look good for A? We agreed there? Okay. Anything wrong? Okay. So B, determine the number of elements in set A. Well, that's pretty easy. What you do is take a look at this whole circle, and you count everything that would be in this circle. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's 5. Second one in set A, but not in set B. Whoops, I need to do that. In set A, but not B, that's one, two, three. So there's three there. In set B, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's, you can count up here in the list too if you want. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven in total. In set B, but not A, that's the one that's in just in this region right here. So that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay, is everybody getting this? Yeah, pretty easy. Uh, so let's do the last three then in set A and set B. <clears throat> so we know that that's going to be this intersection part where they intersect or overlap. So that's going to be 2. In set 
a or set b. Now this is something we haven't really talked about yet. Uh, whoops. So in set a or set b. Okay. So in set a or b literally means all of them that are in either set. So you just count all of them once. So that's going to be uh, this right here. I'll do this with a highlighter. So it's everything that's inside a or b. So that's everything that's in here. Okay, that's A or B. That's really important. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That's 10. And if I counted all the numbers in A and then added all the numbers in B, remember I'd be double counting some. So you kind of got to be careful. One way you could look at it, which is something we're going to do in, in, in the future here, uh, in, in some sections coming up, is we can add up all of A and add up all of B. But then we'd have to subtract uh, the ones that we've counted twice. So just a heads up, that's coming. Okay, a, uh, a prime. Now that is everything that's not in A. So these ones are in A, right here. The ones that are not in that circle would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Agreed? All right, so there's question number one done for you. Uh, and... Uh, that kind of accompanies this 3.2 lesson. So I'll give you the rest of your assignment here, and you can uh, work on that.